Welcome back to the third part of my character kit bashing tutorial series. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to fit a piece of body armor to your character and applying weight paint to it, which will allow it to flex realistically with your character. I will also be showing you how to apply weight paint corrections to the whole character. For this demonstration, I'll be using the Stitch Together armature from the last video, as it has several incompatible weights, which I will be showing you how to fix. Before we begin, unhide the human skin collection. Then select both the arms, the head, and the armature. Parent these objects to the armature. Don't forget to apply the armature's modifiers for both of these objects. Now hide the head, as we'll only be editing the body. Let's start by equipping the character with some body armor. Open up the blend file, which contains our kitbash pack, and let's take a look at what sets are available. My original theme was Soviet nuclear survivor. Unfortunately, most of the body armor sets on hand are quite modern, so I'm going to have to compromise. I'm going to select this plate carrier. Right click on it, copy, go back to the character folder, and paste it in. Then go to the transform settings, and copy all selected. Parent it to the main armature, and then make sure that its modifier is set to the main armature. Delete the plate carrier's armature. Now that the plate carrier is connected to the armature, we will now stress test it to see if there are any problems. As you can see, there are some incompatibilities with the armature's weights in this mesh. We're going to have to spend some time fixing this. In order to see the weight paint information, you must first click on the armature, and then click on the object you want to view. Navigate over to the Object Modes drop-down menu, and click on Weight Paint. Then, while holding Control, we will click on each bone to see what weight paint information is on the mesh. This mesh is completely blue, which means there is no weight paint information. As an example, if we take a look at the jacket, we will want to be seeing something like this. Large areas of color surrounding each individual bone, indicating where the weights are putting pressure. Each color represents the amount of pressure the weight paint is putting on the mesh. Blue indicates zero pressure, and red indicates maximum pressure. All of the colors in between dictate the intensity. So, how do we give the plate carrier the correct weight paint information? We're going to do a weight paint transfer, where we move the weight paint from the jacket onto the plate carrier. The first thing we need to do is to go to edit mode and select the sections of the jacket that we want to transfer the weight paint to. If we don't do this, we'll have bleed in from the weights on the arms. So I'm just selecting the torso. Once that is selected, I'm going to right click and separate selected. Before we do a weight paint transfer, take a moment to make sure that the plate carrier has a good fit. Select the plate carrier, right click, and then select set origin to geometry to center the cursor on the mesh. Reposition it slightly, just so that it fits more comfortably on the character and removes some of the clipping. To do the weight paint transfer, we have to first select the torso and then select the plate carrier. Then we go back to object mode and then go to weight paint. Go to weights and then transfer weights. Then in the transfer mesh data menu, we go to the source layers selection and set the active layer to by name. Then go back to the object mode and select the armature and then go to pose mode. The plate carrier should now start flexing. Make sure to stress test the mesh by moving every bone to check it to see how it reacts. We can see here that this shoulder bone is warping the plate carrier in an unrealistic way, so we'll need to fix that. First, go back to object mode and select the armature and the plate carrier. Then go to weight paint mode. Now, this bone isn't interacting with the mesh. This means that another bone is. Let's go down the bone chain and check each of them. This bone doesn't seem to be interacting with the mesh either, so let's check the one on top. There it is. This bone seems to be bleeding weight paint information over to the plate carrier. So, how do we remove this? We select the gradient tool, and then set the weight value to zero. Drag a gradient across. That will delete all of the weight paint information. Let's continue stress testing. We can see that the plate carrier is crumpling as the character leans forward. In order to correct this, go back to weight paint mode and select these bones to see how this weight paint information is projected onto the mesh. 
there's a giant gap where the weight paint information has stopped. If we select the waist bone, we can see that the weight paint information seems to have created a crater shape in the mesh. Since this piece of body armor is strapped to the character's chest, the waist bones should have no effect on it. We'll use the gradient tool again, set the weight paint value to zero, and then drag a gradient up to delete all of that information. We will now select the chest bone and set that weight paint value to one. Rotate the camera to look side on and then pull a slight gradient up. This will smooth out the crumpling effect and we'll fix our issue. Go back to pose mode and do some more stress tests. We can still see some clipping here. A bit of knowledge on human anatomy can go a long way. For example, it would not be possible for a human to lean forward like this, bending only with their upper torso. When a character leans forward, he will look like this, bending with their lower torso instead of relying on the upper torso for motion. Don't be concerned if items are slightly clipping in your poses, as it's okay to take creative liberties and make manual adjustments if needed. I've noticed a strange weight paint artifact here. His groin area seems to be deflating. I don't think that's how humans are supposed to work. Uh, let's fix that right away. Select the armature and the pants. Return to weight paint mode and select the lower waist bone. We can see here there is a ribbon of weight paint information in this area. Just apply a gradient, set it to zero, and pull a gradient up, and that will fix the problem. To reset the armature to its default pose, go to pose mode. Select all the bones and right click, and select clear user transforms. This concludes part three of my kit bashing tutorial series. In part four, we will cover how to use models from Sketchfab to bring your character to life. <laughs>